What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. Y'all haven't heard that intro in a couple of weeks because Tori and I, I'm Scott Bear, that's Tori McElhaney. We've been on summer vacation and it has been awesome. Uh, I went to Key West with the fam, had a blast, saw a shark while I was snorkeling, actually. Ooh. Heard the, the swimsuit right off me, basically. Um, <laughs> it was like, wait, that's a 10 foot shark, very close to my six year old son. That's not a good situation. Uh, do you know what I did, Tori? I, I didn't paint a real shark. I just moved a few other strangers closer to the shark and me farther away. So the shark would want them, not me. I don't think that I mean, makes what's a the, good person, but. Uh, what's the saying? Like if a bear is chasing you, like you just have to be faster than the slowest person. <laughs> That's exactly same, it. same principle. You just have to same. be faster than the other people in the water. Yes, um, that is exactly right. Uh, so we are pre-recording this when I went to Key West. Uh, Tori has gone to Tybee Island. There's a Jamaica trip. Coming up, I think you will be on your Jamaica trip when this podcast comes out. I think if I'm doing the math right, yes. you, you've got to be stoked for that. I cannot wait. I'm going with one of my friends who is from Jamaica. So we're doing the true Jamaican experience because we're staying with her grandmother for a couple of nights. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Will, will, will there be any time for you to have a cocktail with a tiny umbrella in it though? Oh, that'll be, so we're staying at an all-inclusive resort, like the first three nights that we're there. So I will only be drinking things if they have a tiny umbrella. In <laughs> I feel like that's essential because heading into training camp, our lives formally end and we turn ourselves <laughs> over to the Falcons machine as they try to improve and continue building in Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith's second season. How about that for a transition? Huh? Loved it. Um, it was we, we're heading into this training camp, which I think, I don't know what you think, I think is intriguing as heck, right? Because there is so much competition. How many times have we heard, prove it, uh, you know, earn your role, right? There's going to be, I, th I think there's more training camp competition than any um, camp that I've covered, whether it was the Falcons or the Raiders or the 49ers in several years. And I think yeah. that there are several intriguing areas where there's going to be a lot of drama, right? That we really don't know who's going to start, who's going to have these bigger roles. And over the course of the next 15, 20 minutes, we're going to talk about those specific areas, the, the three kind of big storylines that Tori and I are focusing on as we head into training camp. Um, oh, and by the way, we've got some freaking awesome stuff coming up during training camp. We're talking about live podcasts. We're talking about player guests. Uh, so much fun stuff coming up on the Falcons final whistle. But before we get to that, we have to talk about what's coming up. And Tori, what's, what's, what's a storyline that you're going to have your eye on as we start to get into late July and August and we move towards the uh, regular season? I think this isn't a very, uh, I don't even know what the word is. It's not like a very sexy answer to say uh -huh. the line of scrimmage in offensive line and defensive line, but I'm going to say it because I think every good thing that could happen for the Falcons, to me, it starts, it begins and ends at the line of scrimmage. And I can't look at this 2022 Falcons team and not look at this line of scrimmage and hope that there is significant improvement from 2021 to 2022, both on the offensive and defensive line. For the offensive line, it's protecting the quarterback, whoever it may be, though I'm saying right now, it's going to be Marcus Mariota, but you know, don't come for me. Huh. Uh, but it's protecting him. It's making sure that he has time in the pocket. It, it, it's all of these things that we, we need to see an improvement on. Then with the defensive line, I know we're going to talk about it. It's getting after the quarterback. It's getting the guy off of his spot and not letting him leak out the sides. I mean, that's these are all things that are very important to any success the Falcons may have in 2022. Yeah, and I look at it. This team has a bunch of intriguing skill players. I want to see what Tyler Algier can do. I want to see mm -hmm. what Drake London can do and Kyle Pitts in his second year. And I think Brian Edwards is on the verge of a breakout year. None of those guys can do anything if, if they are not protected. Right. And right. I think here's the weird thing is that we talk about competition, 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 challengers, right? 
it's possible, it's possible that we go into 2022 with the exact same offensive line that we that the Falcons had last year. Yeah. It's possible. But dot 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 Matt Hennessy is going to be challenged at center. Mm-hmm. Jalen Mayfield will be challenged at left guard. Caleb McGarry will be challenged at right tackle. And I think if they go earn it, then they deserve the right to maintain their jobs. But I, I right. think the fact that there will be challengers, veteran challengers, Jermaine Effetti, first round pick, right? Up and down sort of career to this point. He wants to start, right? Drew Dahlman didn't uh, come here to be a backup right at, at, at center and i think that competition is going to be good so if we end up with the same starting five okay cool but they have earned it where last year i think they were given it a little bit right yeah i think it was more of a we are just patching this up to get through the first few weeks and then you get to a point where it's like okay you can't necessarily take jay you can't take Jalen mayfield out of this i mean i think i think people forget that the offensive line was set differently before last year's training camp than what it actually ended up being. I think Josh Andrews was supposed to play a much bigger role. And then he goes and like gets every injured yeah. a couple weeks into training camp. And that to me changed the whole scope of the offensive line because of that. Now we're looking at a different group altogether. And I think that you're absolutely right that there is, I've said this before. I think I've said it on TV, but like the offensive line competition, I think is going to be, it should be the nastiest competition on the field. This training camp bar none, in my opinion, they should be beating each other up to to earn that starting role. And, and, and going back to this storyline, we're, we're on the offensive line, but you said line of scrimmage. And I think, Once we get pads on, which is, I don't know, five days into camp, something like that, I think it's going to be intense, right? And I I think that those one-on-ones, the the 11 on 11 stuff, I think is going to be fascinating. And I think it can transition, talking about the uh, line of scrimmage, can transition to another storyline that that I really am keeping an eye on. And it revolves around the number 18, right? The number 18 was the number of sacks the Falcons had last year. TJ Watt had more. Okay. That's not good. They, I know sacks aren't the be all end all. Right. But I think that's an indicator. Those are game changing plays. Sacks can come with strip sacks. Sacks can force a punt. Sacks can change the course of an offensive series. In addition to the fact that the Falcons weren't very good at doing the basics, right. Uh, Containing mobile quarterbacks, keeping guys in the pocket, forcing errant throws, getting your hand up and knocking the ball down right? Basic stuff that needs to get better. So with the defensive line, we're kind of, we, the Falcons are hoping for better from the same, right? Grady Jarrett, Taquan Graham, Marlon Davidson. Potential hasn't been realized yet. Has to get better off the edge. Lorenzo Carter. I will not stop talking about this dude. I think he's poised for a breakout year. I know it kills Tori because I give him so many compliments that she doesn't have a chance to. Here's Um, the thing with Lorenzo Carter. I feel like I could add so much to the conversation, but Scott (laughs) just keeps talking about him that I feel I feel the need, like I can't talk about him because then like we're both talking about him and then it's overkill. You know, it's like, there's a, there's a fine line. So I will let you have your Lorenzo Carter soapbox. I, oh. I give it to you. All right. Well then let's transition to the rookies then. What do you, ex- what do you expect? What are you looking to see during training camp from Arnold Ebicady and D'Angelo uh, Malone, the third round pick? Yeah, I I want to be able to see obvious improvements. And I'm not saying that in in any way to say like that I didn't see them do well in mini camp. That's not what I'm saying at all. Many, but I think there is a misconception that mini camp, you can learn a lot from mini camp. And I can sit here and say you don't learn a dang thing in mini camp. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Yeah, because you are not seeing these guys go even 75%. Like there aren't, there, there aren't pads on, no one's hitting, there's no tackling, there's no running. Like, and so you don't get to see 
these guys really get after it in the way that you need to see in order to understand what they need to do and improve on. So for training camp purposes, I want to see exactly like what we're talking about with the offensive line. I want to see Arnold Ebiketti, D'Angelo Malone, Ade Ogundeji, Lorenzo Carter. I want to see them get after it. I want to see them be able to make some things happen um, when they are playing in those more live settings. Uh, and I do believe that we are going to learn a lot more when we get into the joint practices with New York and Jacksonville. I think those those four practices to me are the most important days of training camp. And I would hope that by the time we get to week one, that we see a guy like Arnold Ebiketti, maybe he's not starting in the very first package or the very first rotation, but he should be in, in that rotation, you know, like he should be a big part of it. And I think like the expectation for a guy like Arnold Ebiketti isn't necessarily to start day one, week one of the season, it's to develop into that guy. I'm okay with not seeing him be a full-time starter until halfway through the season, because I want to see him improve. I want to see, I don't want to see a linear line. I want to see it go up. I want, I want to see the production go up as the year goes on. That's, that's the hope that I have for Arnold Abiquetti's year and D'Angelo Malone too. I, I don't want to not talk about him, but mainly Arnold Abiquetti. <laughs> yeah. I, I think if you're being a negative Nancy, you would say uh, that Arnold Ebicati is a one-year wonder, right? That that he had a great year at Penn State, some decent years at Temple. There are some draft Knicks that thought he was a first-round pick, that he belonged in that um, elite class. I, I think he has all the tools. I think he has the right mindset. Guys, once you get to know him, you're going to dig him. He is just a cool dude, um, personality plus, and uh comes with a great backstory that we'll have features about, uh, but, <laughs> but, but nonetheless, I, I think it's going to be interesting for him. I think D'Angelo, I just want to see him as that like rabid dog being held by the leash. And then somebody just like, let's go of it. Right. Like yeah. I want him to do that. I want his one job to be like, see that quarterback right there. Go tackle that dude. And well, that's what he was. That's what right. he was in uh, at Western Kentucky. I mean, I talked to, uh scouts and assistant coaches if you read my rookie series like you know that was d'angelo malone's role at western kentucky they were just like d'angelo sick him that's literally <laughs> that's literally what ed monachino said they did with him and so translating that to the league i completely get what you're saying yeah so uh, i think if if they can up the number of game altering plays Yes. Whether it's strip sacks or whether it's quarterback pressure that forces an errant throw, AJ Terrell would appreciate some quarterback pressure that leads to lame ducks that float up that he can snatch out of the air. Um, and there are some good defensive backs here. I, I'm pretty confident that the secondary will be a strength. Yeah, I think I think Jalen Hawkins, he, he's in my Lorenzo Carter camp. I, yeah. I, I think we could have breakout season material from him. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of intriguing things to look at line of scrimmage, offensive line. We talked about the pass rush, but we got to talk about the quarterbacks, right? I, I do it. I think I'm 100% in agreement with you that Marcus Mariota is going to start the year as the starter. Yeah. But I mean, Desmond Ritter, according to reports, was talking in the pre-draft process saying how he was going to unseat a veteran, right? He's got, I don't know. He just... He got, he has a, he has something that he's got I, a thing, right? He, he has, has a thing, a thing. <laughs> that's really intriguing to me, you know? Yeah. Um, and I want to know what that's about. And I think yeah. he's going to push. He's 44 and six was his collegiate record. The guy's a winner. He just he has never, a thing. Yeah. He never lost at home. I don't think. No, he never lost at home. I love like, those stats. I love that like, stat. Yeah, that was something that I kept talking to people about. They're like, well, you talk to Desmond Ritter and he's a winner and he has a comparative, a competitive spirit and et cetera, et cetera. It's all good things, of course. But then you actually talk to Desmond Ritter and it makes sense. Like, that's the thing is like, I think that talking to him, I think he's very, I mean, I, I think if you were to say like, go up to Desmond Ritter and be like, hey man, like 
enjoy your backup role in 2022, he'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm going to be the starter, you know, like he just carries himself in that way, in that confident way. And I think that bodes really well for him. And I think something that I'm never going to get over is Arthur Smith saying that from the neck up that Desmond Ritter is light years ahead of rookie quarterbacks that he's worked with before. I cannot. Arthur Smith does not pay that type of compliment to someone. I don't know. I I don't know how else to like pound it into people's brains that that is a very very important comment for Arthur Smith to make about a rookie quarterback. Like if you go back to last training camp, right? And we were all there, and we all saw Kyle Pitts doing Kyle Pitts things yeah. in practice in training camp. There are times where I mean he's going over and above. Like he just. He just, his physical tools were evident. And mm-hmm. then you would go to the press conference and you'd be like, hey, Arthur, did you see Kyle Pitts do that crazy athletic thing? And I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I didn't see nothing, right? He just wouldn't do it because he has a philosophy and um, that r- r- you got to go prove it, right? Yeah. In a, like in a game, Arthur Smith talks a lot about he uh, Kyle made like a crazy one handed um, going one way. The ball was going another way catch against Tampa Bay. Right. And then after that, he was talking to our PR director, David Bassity, and he was like, the media has got to talk about that. Right. That, that he's allowed <laughs> to compliment that type of behavior. He went out and did it. Right. So to have this Desmond back to Desmond Ritter now. I was wondering when we were going to go back. <laughs> right, maybe never. Um, so we going back to, to Desmond, that's I'm trying to give some context to the gravity of that comment. Right? right. And going back to what you said before, too. Right. That you can't learn anything in minicamp. Right. Right. Don't chart his passes in minicamp. OK, don't do it. It drives, drives me insane. Uh, but you can chart them in the middle of training camp, right? Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think that what it was interesting about the comment that I think it will be intriguing is, so he's mentally getting it, right? Will that translate into better physical play? I think we need right. to see that. We need to see yep. the accuracy. We need to see the, the arm strength. We need to see the commands, which is pretty clear. And I think that if we're if this is a competition, that's the best way for Desmond to make it a competition, right? Right. Uh, again, I, I, just, I just look at Marcus Mariota. He's 28 years old. Yeah. He ain't that old, man. Here's the thing about Marcus Mariota. There is, I think there are very few people in the league that have an opportunity like what Marcus Mariota has with the Falcons in 2022. Uh, I, I think a lot of times when you have somebody of that caliber slip, it's, it's so hard to get back to where they were and to be given a chance to to show that, hey, I'm still starting quarterback caliber guy. I'm still that guy. Marcus Mariota has a chance that doesn't come around very often. And I really do believe that he is in this year specifically looking at this opportunity like, this is it for me. I've got to go out and prove. We talk about proving it, proving it, proving it. There is no one who better epitomizes that than Marcus Mariota. So I I know that everybody's talking about like Desmond, Marcus, Desmond, Marcus. Don't overlook the absolute like, (laughs) I I mean, just like inward competition that Marcus Mariota has with himself to prove to himself that he is that guy and that he can go out in 2022 and still be that guy. Yeah, it's going to be a fast. This guy's won a playoff game right? He was the number two overall pick. He's been in the national spotlight for a long time. And, and I think so much of quarterbacking is, you know, the old nature versus nurture argument. He's got the nature part. He's got all the physical tools. Can he be nurtured in a way that allows him to thrive? I think if he, he, he talked about playing free, if we're, if we're dissecting comments, which I like to do. um, Oh, that's what we get paid to do. (laughs) Good point. Thank you everyone for listening to this. (laughs) Uh, but I go back to him talking about playing free and it was on, it was Chris Sims was talking about Marcus on a podcast on pro football talk or something like that. And he talked about Marcus previously being robotic and Marcus has talked about being robotic in that he's reading sheet music, right? He's going through his, going through his progressions and he's making what he thinks is the right choice. And he talked a little bit about 
playing free, playing jazz, man. Like he, like, like you dig, <laughs> like, like he's got. <laughs> I'm losing my mind here. <laughs> that was fantastic. I'm gonna need a shirt that just says "You dig." You Scott, dig. Scott. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I just think that if he can play free and allow his physical tools to shine, I think that could be a good thing for the Falcons. Um, so keep an eye on. You know, I like that we added you added a competition to all these competitions, right? We, we've got the spots on the offensive line. We've got the edge rushers. We have the quarterback competition. And then we have the Marcus Mariota competing with himself competition, which is wow. a great point. It's something that I'm totally going to steal your idea and write a whole column <laughs> about it and give you zero credit. <laughs> you know, and, like, I'm glad that I could be of service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and steal it. Plagiarism at its finest. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, keep an eye on that too. Um, and also keep an eye on the Falcons Final Whistle podcast and what I talked about earlier. We're going to be doing so much cool stuff uh, during training camp. Please come out to training camp. Say hi to us, by the way. Yeah. I think it's going to be really, really fun. And another thing, this is our last podcast with just two of us. Um, wow. By the time that you listen to this, you will have read the intro column from Ashton Edmonds, who is joining the squad. We are so freaking pumped. Woo! So pumped. We're so excited. So, so excited. you know, rate, review, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Um, as you're listening to this on July 26th, Tori will be sipping a Mai Tai, probably. Or probably. A and, uh, and then after that, we're going to be on the grind. <laughs>